In this video, I'm going to be doing a quick gear review for you guys on the Black Rhino Concealment TCS holster, which has become my new favorite holster. But uh, before we get into the review, let me give you a little bit of background information first. A couple of weeks ago, I was doing some product testing where I had over 20 holsters to test out, including a few of my custom-made holsters and a Black Rhino Concealment TCS holster. You should know that I'm very picky about my holsters and which ones I stand behind, so my evaluation process is kind of lengthy. That being said, let's see how the Black Rhino stacked up. So the first phase in my evaluation process is the physical inspection, and all I want to see is the design and the build quality of the holster. At first glance, the Black Rhino Concealment holster is obviously very well built. They have an excellent molding, the, they use a high quality Kydex, not the Bolotron stuff that you buy online. They use good screws, good rivets, they use these wing tabs on the back where your belt goes. But the real indication that the company takes pride in their work is to check out the edges. Finished edges means that the company's taken some time in the fit and finish of their product, along with making sure that your firearm doesn't get scratched up going in and out of the holster, and also making sure that the holster doesn't get snagged up on your shirt, and that's really important. Phase two in my evaluation process is all about wearability and comfort. It's one of the biggest characteristics about any holster. An uncomfortable holster is useless because you're not going to keep it on you all day. I really like the way the Black Rhino Concealment Holster feels. This is a super comfortable holster. It's lightweight, contours around my hip perfectly, and it sits really low profile. Black Rhino Concealment uses wing tabs for the belt instead of belt loops like many of the competitors do, which allows the holster to sit tighter to the body. On average, you're talking about maybe a three quarter of an inch, maybe only half an inch, but that three quarter or half an inch means quite a bit when you're having a five or six pound firearm sitting inside of the holster. Phase three in my evaluation process is about basic operation. What I'm looking for is a good draw from the holster, good retention, and reholstering my firearm back into the holster. Let's get about 50 to 60 holster draws in just to see how this thing feels. Drawing from the holster this many times is a critical component in selecting the right holster. You want to see that the firearm comes out of the holster smoothly, goes back into the holster smoothly, and it provides the right grip angle. Many of the holsters I was working with had issues with retention. Either they were so tight that I was pulling my pants up or had to use both hands to get the gun out while others were so loose that retention was almost non-existent. The Black Rhino was super smooth and had the perfect balance and retention. They also gave a 10 degree cant in the molding which made the grip angle spot on. I could reach down for my firearm with confidence and know that it was there every single time. Consistency is key. Phase four in the evaluation process is really about pushing the holster, and this is kind of where the truth comes to life. Here I'm gonna be doing a bunch of athletic movement like jumping jacks, squats, shuffling, sprints, standing, kneeling, prone, and a whole bunch of other things to see how the holster performs. This kind of testing is often overlooked because it feels silly, but it's definitely a critical test. Many of us wear our firearms for self-defense, and self-defense is a very active and random action. That means we need to train for that kind of movement and put our gear through that movement to make sure that it's suitable. Better to find out now than the middle of a violent encounter. You'll also find that when you spend a bunch of time moving like this, holsters tend to drop guns, loosen up, and in some cases, just fall apart. The Black Rhino really stood out here. It never seemed to fail, and it was comfortable and durable enough to allow me to move like this. I had absolutely zero gear failures, and I was trying to induce a failure, but the Black Rhino kept performing. All right, guys, so I've been wearing the holster now for about 30 days, and that includes being on the range, that includes teaching classes or at home, in the car, while I'm at work. And I got to tell you that this thing is nonstop performing for me. It's become my favorite holster, even more so than my custom-made holsters, which says a lot. I've spent a lot of money on custom holsters. I liked it so much, what I did was I contacted the guys over at Black Rhino, and asked them for a hookup. And they were able to give me a discount code for S2 Strategic Defense members only. If you guys are interested in checking out the Black Rhino lineup and want to save some money on it, sign on up for my newsletter off of the website at www.s2strategic.com and the discount code is on the newsletter. Hopefully this video helps you guys out. If you guys like it, please like, share, subscribe, comment down below. If you guys are on Facebook, follow us there at S2 Strategic Defense. And the biggest thing, again, guys, is head on over to my website at www.s2strategic.com 
and sign on up for the newsletter for discounts on the Black Rhino concealment holsters, along with much more. Until then, be safe, be well, and I'll see you guys soon.